Hello friends and welcome back to another video from Homemaker. I hope you all are having a wonderful day today. In our today's video, we are going to talk about this beautiful succulent in front of me, which is known as Kalenkoi or Kalencho or Kelts. These are beautiful flowering succulents that belong to stone crop or chrysalisi family. These plants are native to Madagascar and they thrive in arid environments. Growers are drawn to Kalenkoi for its ease of care and interesting leaves and flowers um, which bloom consistently throughout the year in response to daylight. Now they are slow growing plants and they reach their mature size in two to five years. They come in many different colors like red, pink, orange, yellow, white and many more. Aren't they beautiful? Look at its leaves, look at its foliage, its beautiful bright flowers that look like roses. So nice. And the great thing about this plant is that it's an indoor plant. You can keep them indoor and they'll give you these beautiful flowers all year round. All right, so let's talk about the care of this plant, how you can take care of this beautiful succulent indoors as well as outdoors. So talking about the light conditions, the Kalenkois, they need a lot of sunlight to bloom unlike any, any other succulent. It's not the type of succulent that you keep it in the dark and it'll do well. This succulent, Kalenkoi especially, it needs a lot of sunlight. So they should always be kept in a room with abundance of bright natural light, but at the same time, not in direct sunlight because the direct hot summer sun can scorch the leaves of these plants and also the your plant not to bloom. So just keep them in the filtered natural light, bright natural light, and they do they will do well. You must uh, keep them away from the windowsill um, and um, make sure that the direct sun does not come on top of it. All right, now talking about the soil conditions. So these Kalenkois, they grow best in a well-draining soil like any other succulent. So the, when you are preparing the soil mix for this plant, make sure that you um, add a lot of perlite to it, which will help in um, good drainage. So I can say a good uh, mixture, a good blend of 50% uh, cacti or succulent mix and 50% of potting mix will do for this um, type of plants or what you can do is take a 60% of peat moss and 40% of perlite for this plant. So the more perlite, the more drainage, the better for this plant because this plant does not like to sit in wet soil. If you forget to water this plant for more than 15 to 20 days, it'll still survive. But overwatering will just kill this plant because you can see the leaves of these plants. You can see the stem. I'll show you the stem of this plant, how thick is it that it is. Here, look at the stem and the leaves. They are very thick and they store a lot of water in them. So if you overwater your plant or you, you water them very um, frequently, then the roots um, and the, the leaves of this plant, it, they'll soak a lot of water, um, which can lead to root rot and eventually the death of your plant. So do not overwater this plant. You might also consider potting um, your plant in a clay pot or a terracotta pot because the terracotta pot will absorb the excess of water. Um, from the soil even if you um, kind of um, get to put um, more water the terracotta pot will absorb the excess of water keeping the soil nice um, and dry like not soggy 
the same time so watering your plant once in two weeks um, should be fine and even less during winter or autumn season the best strategy to check whether your plant soil is dry or not is to stick your finger first few inches into the soil and see if your finger comes out dry with no soil sticking to your finger that means it's time to water your plant but if you feel any moisture at all in your plant then you can wait for a couple of more days um, and then recheck your soil after some time um, for any dryness or anything and then you can water your plant so this was all about watering regarding fertilizing your plant so you must fertilize your plant um, your kalanchoe during the bloom season um, I mean during the spring or summer season when the flowers are there when your plant is blooming um, this uh, kalanchoe they needs to be fertilized so a well balanced um, indoor fertilizer will do um, because these plants are flowering plants they give out flowers so even if you add vermicompost or organic compost or um, worm castings into the soil um, it'll keep your plant healthy and it'll keep your plant blooming as well so um, fertilizing your plant once in a month during the spring and summer season will also help so you can use any indoor fertilizer but for these plants if you use a fertilizer which is rich in potassium um, it'll help to add more buds to your uh, plant and um, more blooming which will make your kalanchoe look more beautiful all right so regarding temperature conditions um, as I told you that these plants are native to Madagascar so they like to be in warm environment um, an arid environment so they love to be in the temperatures between I can say 55 to 80 degree Fahrenheit um, and humidity I can say the normal indoor humidity is just fine for them they don't need extra moisture or a mist of water on them because they're succulent so um, they love to be in warm conditions you must always make sure that keep them away from cold drafts so and and freezing cold temperatures so if you keep your plant if you're keeping your plant outside um, then during the winter season or autumn season you might need to bring your plant inside and keep it in a nice warm spot um, because these plants like warm temperatures and one more thing that I would like to tell you about this plant is um, that these plants are unfortunately very toxic to the pets and other livestock as well so you might need to keep them away from your pets if you have at home cats dogs and other livestock if they like to nibble on your plants so you would like to um, keep your plant away from them because these plants the leaves and the flowers of this plant it contains a chemical um, compound which is quite toxic it's called um, buffered dianelide something like that so anyways you don't need to do anything with the chemical compound but just to let you know that this plant is really toxic um, ingestion of the leaves or the flowers of this plant can cause severe poisoning um, it can cause diarrhea vomiting abnormal heart rhythm so um, please if you've got small kids or pets at home keep keep this plant away from them um, because it's quite toxic so yeah okay now we'll talk about re-blooming this plant so after the blooming season has gone and um, your the the flowers um, have dropped off what you do is you just cut those fallen over flowers you cut them and um, your plant will be kind of it now these plants are same like poinsettias um, which go through photoperiodism so if you want your plant to bloom in winter season or autumn season as well then what you need to do is you need to provide at least 14 11 to 14 hours of darkness to this plant for your plant to rebloom in the next season so what you do is during the winter season you place your plant in 
in a place where there is complete darkness. Complete darkness means pitch black. It has to be. So either you keep it in your closet where the, not even a single ray of light should enter or if you have a room where no one enters, it's always dark like a store room or something, then you keep your plant in there or if that is also not working, then you put your plant in a box, in, in a garden box or something um, so that not even a single ray of light should go inside. Even if a if your plant receives even a single ray of light that whole cycle will be disturbed and your plant is not going to bloom so what you do is you provide 11 to 14 hours of complete darkness to your plant and your plant will be all ready um, to bloom in the next season in the next spring season so um, so this plant is works um, same like of poinsettia and poinsettias are also succulents flower uh, flowering yeah flowering succulents so but they get the uh, red bracts or whatever bracts they have pink bracts whatever on them uh, but these ones they flower so the, this was a re-blooming tip that you can try i haven't tried it yet um, with my um, kalenkoi but if you want to try you can try that one uh, because it's still spring and my plant is still blooming so i haven't tried it maybe in winters um, i will try um, the same Regarding propagation, um, so this plant, because it's a succulent, it is very, very easy to propagate this plant. This plant can be propagated through the stem cutting as well as the leaf cutting. So what you do is, if you want to go for uh, the soil propagation, then you take um, the cutting, the leaf cutting or the stem cutting of this plant, um, let the cut end to dry out um, to develop the crust on it. Um, and then you put it into the soil and within a month you must see the roots coming out but whereas if you are going for water propagation you don't need um, your cut end to dry out you can just take the cutting and pop it in water and probably in a month you should see the roots coming out and once the roots are well developed you put it um, back into the soil and your whole new kalankoi plan will be ready so it's so that um, simple to propagate your plant the kalankoi plant when I'll do the propagation of this plant then I'll definitely make another video or update you with how the propagation when my propagation went but otherwise it's a very easy plant to take care of especially for the beginners who um, don't have much of experience about watering and taking care of plants this is a very very easy plant to take care of um, even if you forget watering it'll still do um, and a wonderful indoor plant just you need to make sure that you keep it away from your pets and that was it that was all about the care propagation and re-blooming of this plant so friends i hope you enjoyed watching my video and um, i'll see you next time with another exciting video till then take care stay safe and enjoy gardening thank you see you next time bye bye